stampeding students make a splash one day early on Mirror Lake Monday. The waves will continue to be seen here on Mirror Lake and it will continue to stay thawed. Our meteorologist is at Mirror Lake with details on jump night weather. Plus, it's officially Beat Michigan Week and we're diving into the biggest game of the year. That's all right here on Buckeye News Now. Welcome back everyone, I'm Rithika Shah. And I'm Ariana Bernard. You're watching Buckeye News Now. The official Mirror Lake jump is tonight, but hundreds of students decided to bypass the tradition in favor of an earlier jump on Monday. Last fall, Ohio State students made a splash when they tore down fences to jump in the icy lake one day early in protest of the wristband regulations. This year, the wristbands and fences are back, and as part of a joint safety initiative through the university and undergraduate student government, they'll be enforced again. As of Monday afternoon, more than 360 students had accepted a Facebook invitation to what some call Mirror Lake Monday. Warmer weather over the weekend gave us some relief from the brutal cold we experienced on campus last week. But the rain has put a damper on the hopes of enjoying these temperatures. And with the Mirror Lake jump happening tonight, the temperatures will be affecting many students' decisions to jump. John, can we expect the weather to stay warm or will winter return in time for the Thanksgiving holiday? Earth and Ariana, much warmer conditions over the, the weekend allowed for the Mirror Lake to thaw out. We had a sheet of ice here Friday and Saturday, fortunately for us now. Much warmer conditions for your Sunday and Monday, and then today temperatures are going to continue to fall. They are going to drop below freezing tonight, but fortunately with the level of activity, we will see the waves will continue to be seen here on Mirror Lake, and it will continue to stay thawed. Now let's get to our forecast. For your Tuesday, we're going to get up to a eventual high of about 39 degrees. It will be cool this afternoon, breezy with winds out of the southwest, about 10 to 15 miles an hour. The sun will be peaking out, but much cooler than what we had yesterday. That cold front moved through and cooled things off quite considerably. As we head into this evening for the Mirror Lake jump by 9 o'clock, as people begin to start jumping, 33 degrees still above that freezing mark. But check this out, by midnight we drop down to 30 degrees. I do not expect the water to refreeze because of all the activity. But the water is going to be downright cold. Winds becoming calm, partly cloudy skies through the evening, and then we get to an eventual low by our Wednesday morning, about 28 degrees. We clear out for the day on Wednesday, mostly sunny skies, calm winds. It'll be a pretty crisp travel day if you're heading out. Uh, the one warning sign is going to be the east coast. They're forecast to get a pretty significant snowstorm. But here in Ohio, not going to have any issues whatsoever. For your Thanksgiving, looks like we're going to get to a low of about 29 degrees to start out by 37 by the afternoon. There is a chance of some overnight snow, so there is a chance we could have a dusting for your Thanksgiving. Cloudy skies, though, going to be the story. Heading into the weekend, well, uh, Friday, we're going to get down to a low of 21 degrees in the morning. Partly sunny skies will be brisk. Only 33 degrees by the afternoon. Saturday for the Ohio State Michigan game. Mostly cloudy. Pretty dreary for the day. An eventual high of 40 degrees by kickoff. I do expect it to be right around freezing. And then for the day on Sunday, another cloudy day. Low of 30, high of 40 degrees. We're a little bit more seasonable. Still a little bit below normal. I'm meteorologist John Banghoff. Back to you guys in the studio. It's officially that time of year. Beat Michigan Week hits campus. And we're talking about the Buckeyes taking on that state up north, next on Buckeye News Now. In his first two matches against that school up north as Ohio State's head coach, Urban Meyer is 2-0. And this Saturday, he'll need to grab his third win against the Wolverines to ensure the Buckeyes stay in the race for the college football playoffs. Here's what Urban Meyer had to say about this year's game against the Buckeyes' rivals at his Monday press conference. Well, they're gonna they're gonna give us everything they got, and they got what they got is a lot. So no, there's and, and these players, this is motivation won't be an issue. Expectation of facing a very talented team, we're facing a top ten defense in the country, and I just you know for the two days now we've been pounding, watching it. They're really good, really good. So no, there's no issue. Very good, athletic and talented on special teams too. We're joined now by our sports director Hayden Grove. Thank you so much for being here, Hayden. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. Glad to be here. So Hayden, we all know the Ohio State-Michigan game is coming up. What can we expect to see during that game? It's going to be an interesting game because you have two teams on very opposite ends of the spectrum. You have Ohio State 10-1, and one, really playing well right now. Michigan 5-6, and six, looking to be bowl eligible. It's going to be a tough game for both teams, obviously, because it is the rivalry. It is the game. Um, I don't know what to expect. I mean, last year we saw an Ohio State team that was way better than Michigan, and Michigan played them really well. This year it could be the same thing, or Ohio State could have a blowout on their hands. And 
depending on the results of the game, what do you see the implications for playoff standings and poll standings looking like for us? If Ohio State wins, they're going to be in the Big Ten Championship game regardless if they win or lose, but that's going to be huge for the playoff standings because uh, you can't lose at this point. They're at number six right now. That'll change on Tuesday, or it might change. It may not change, but they're at number six in the playoff standings. So they have to beat Michigan. They have to beat Wisconsin if or, or whoever they will play in the Big Ten Championship game if they do want to make that college football playoff. Um, obviously, these are two must-win games, but not as not as desperate a situation as as Michigan, who needs to win, or they're not making a bowl game. So Ohio State needs to win and needs to win in the Big Ten championship game if they want any chance in the playoff. Okay, and there's been a lot of talk about JT Barrett possibly winning the Heisman. What are your thoughts on that? I think that's a little much. I don't think he's done enough to win the Heisman Trophy quite yet. Um, but he's definitely up there. There are a lot of guys. Marcus Mariota is definitely the front runner, in my opinion. But he's definitely up there. He's put up the numbers that you would expect the Heisman Trophy winner to have. Um, I just don't know if he's going to be if he's going to have enough. Uh, he didn't do enough against Indiana. I don't think he did enough in, against a team like Penn State. If he would have had big games in those games, I think we're talking about him as the front runner. But instead, he'll be second or third, I think, when it finishes out. But he'll definitely he should be in the ceremony if he plays well against Michigan and against the Big Ten, whoever they play in the Big Ten championship game. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us, Hayden. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It's not just the football team preparing to take on Michigan. Buckeyes across the university are getting ready for the rivalry game with a variety of spirited activities. As the most anticipated game of the year comes closer, Lantern TV reporter Kaylee Rents brings you a small piece of Ohio State's annual Beat Michigan Week. With the faceoff approaching between the Buckeyes and that team up north, Ohio State's famous Beat Michigan Week is in full swing. The week started Sunday with the annual Beat Michigan 5K charity run put together by members of Tau Beta Phi. Beat Michigan 5K is a, a charity race, so obviously giving to the local community through Neighborhood Services Inc. Uh, they're the only food and clothing pantry um, in the campus area, which is uh, super important for this time of year. Another event students could attend was the Beat Michigan Pep Rally, which had various appearances from Buckeye football captains Curtis Grant, Jeff Hireman, and Duran Grant to President Drake. Also performances from Mechadon and Ohio State's all-male dance team Genesis. Several students came out to the event and shared their reactions. Well, um, I really liked the singers for Carmen, Ohio. I thought they were just great. They did a great job. Um, and I really liked the group OSM. They're yeah, really cool. yeah, they were really good. The singing was great. The music was great. The energy, the electricity, the excitement, you know, getting all the big time celebs up there. Reporting for Lantern TV, I'm Kaylee Rents. Next, we bring you highlights from the AMAs. And the university is offering a feast on Turkey Day. Stay with us. Students and faculty staying on campus for Thanksgiving can still enjoy all the comforts of turkey, mashed potatoes, stuffing, and pie. The Office of International Affairs holds an annual Thanksgiving dinner to bring together students and faculty of the campus community who are unable to return home for the holiday weekend. This year, 1,600 guests are expected to attend the Thanksgiving event. We have like a lot of people who don't go home for Thanksgiving. We have a lot of international students who probably can't go home for Thanksgiving, and so I think it's important for people like that, for them to feel like this is a community at the Ohio State. And it's free. So it's free to students. All you have to do is get a ticket from the various locations on campus. So I think it's a good, good like event to have. It was a night full of performances at the 2014 American Music Awards this past Sunday, where Taylor Swift and One Direction took some of the night's top honors. Lantern Arts Editor Danielle Seaman has more on the evening's highlights. Thanks, Ariana. Pop singer Katy Perry and English boy band One Direction came out on top of the 2014 American Music Awards Sunday night. Both won three honors apiece. Perry was awarded Favorite Female Artist Pop Rock, Favorite Artist Adult Contemporary, and Single of the Year for her Juicy J collaboration Dark Horse. One Direction swept Artist of the Year along with Favorite Band, Duo, or Group, and Favorite Album for Midnight Memories in the Pop Rock category. Iggy Azalea picked up the first music awards of her career in the rap hip-hop category, while veteran soul R&B songstress Beyonce was recognized as favorite female artist in soul R&B. In her surprise 2013 self-titled album, picked up the favorite album in the same category. 
Taylor Swift was presented the first ever Dick Clark Award for Excellence in honor of the late radio and TV personality who also created the AMAs. For the success of her last three albums, notable performances Sunday night include Swift's theatrical TV debut of Blank Space, Lord's performance of her Hunger Games Mockingjay track, Yellow Flicker Beat, and Jennifer Lopez and Azalea's racy stage rendition of Lopez's Single Booty. Thanks so much, Danny, and that's all we have for you guys this week on Buckeye News Now. Remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next week.